Hello, I am Petra and uh, I am a PhD student in the Department of Molecular Theory and Spectroscopy. And today I will show you an example of calculating some magnetic properties using quasi-degenerate perturbation theory in ORCA. So when I say magnetic properties, I have in mind properties of the EPR spin Hamiltonian. Uh, so if you have a molecular system that has a total electron spin that is non-zero, it will have an associated magnetic moment and then it can be studied by electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy. And the contents of EPR spectra are often summarized in terms of parameters of the EPR spin Hamiltonian, which contains the main physical interactions that are happening. So the main one would be the Zeeman interaction between the electron spin magnetic moment and the external field parametrized by the G tensor. Then if you have some uh, nuclei with non-zero spin, uh, you might have uh, hyperfine interactions parametrized by A tensors. And if your total electron spin is greater than one half, you might encounter a term that looks like uh, this, uh, formally in the spin Hamiltonian, looks like this coupling of the electron spin with itself. It's called the zero field splitting term and it's parameterized by this tensor D. And uh, in this short talk, I will show you an example of calculating the zero field splitting in a, a molecule of oxygen. So here I have prepared a molecular orbital diagram that shows uh, the configuration corresponding to the ground state of uh, the oxygen molecule, which is a, uh, actually a spin triplet. And uh, when you have a spin triplet, then uh, you expect that you have three sublevels that are degenerate. But actually there are some small interactions that uh, originate from relativistic treatment that make the three sublevels of this triplet split in energy even before you apply the external magnetic field. In oxygen, uh, there is actually one number that can describe this, that's the D parameter, uh, that uh, says how much the lower level splits, splits from the upper two levels, because the D parameter is greater than zero, and uh, the upper two levels remain degenerate, because the other E parameter is zero, so that means that uh, the upper two levels are degenerate, even though this does not generally have to be the case for uh, uh, integer spin systems. Now, what are the interactions that make this splitting happen? Well, uh, one of them is the dipolar coupling of the uh, electron spin electron spin, uh, that gives rise to this spin spin coupling contribution to zero field splitting. Uh, another interaction is the spin orbit coupling. Uh, spin Hamiltonian parameters in general, so including zero field splitting, can be calculated in different ways in ORCA. So there is one uh, family of, of, of these methods that is based on response theory, where uh, the, you know, the spin Hamiltonian parameters are identified with uh, uh, derivatives of the electronic energy with respect to some external perturbations, and uh, then the implementation is quite similar to any uh, other analytical derivative property. And the other type of calculation that's possible in ORCA is based on quasi-degenerate perturbation theory, where uh, actually you start from some kind of wave function theory calculation that is able to give you the, an approximate solution for your Born-Oppenheimer molecular Hamiltonian, and uh, not only the ground state, but also some number of excited states and uh, then uh, these uh, states that you obtained are uh, used by the program to construct this QDPT matrix. So that would be the matrix representation of the Born-Oppenheimer molecular Hamiltonian plus the perturbing terms, that's the spin-orbit coupling and spin-spin coupling also, potentially. And then uh, this matrix is diagonalized to obtain some uh, states and energies and uh, these states and en their energies are compared with the form that your effective spin Hamiltonian should have by the program, and the spin Hamiltonian parameters are somehow extracted by making this link. So let's look at an example. First, uh, at the calculation that's based on response theory. So here I'm showing the operators that contribute. So from the spin-spin coupling, uh, which looks like a dipolar interaction, uh, the, you get a 
first order contribution to zero field splitting. And then from the spin orbit coupling, you get a second order contribution, which means that the program needs to solve for a response to the spin orbit perturbation, which potentially does not need to concern you that much, uh, but you might be interested in looking at the input. So this is a kind of simple example. And uh, for the oxygen molecule here, after a DFT calculation, I'm saying in the EPR NMR input block that I want the zero field splitting and I want both the spin spin and the spin orbit contributions to that. So the output would look like something like this. Uh, uh, it will give the zero field splitting tensor, the, the matrix, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, these uh, D and E over D parameters that you might be interested in comparing with experiment. So you can uh, see here that it's not completely unreasonably off the experiment. Uh, at least it has the same sign and, and everything. And uh, then the program will print the, uh, the contributions to the total value. For, in particular, I picked here the spin spin and spin orbit. And you can see that uh, in the, this system, oxygen, both of these terms are uh, kind of the same order of magnitude. And that's actually why I picked this system to show you. Now, uh, if you want to do such a calculation uh, using the QDPT, uh, I have an example here also for the same system. Now, I have to start with a note of warning because the CASA CF calculations require quite a lot more setup from you as the user and uh, then the DFT calculations and the, with response theory on top of that. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of advice on setting up CASA CF calculations that you can find in this CASA CF tutorial that I really recommend you check out if, if you don't know it yet. Uh, you can find it in the download section of the ORCA forum. And the things that you need to pick are firstly the active space that needs to represent your system well. Here I just started uh, with the MP2 natural orbitals. And second of all, you also, to get your property, you need to ask for some excited states, not only the ground state. And you need to be aware what kind of states can uh, contribute to your property. So uh, in case of zero field splitting, actually not only states with the same spin multiplicity as your ground state, which would be these uh, triplets that I'm asking for can contribute, but also states that have total electron spin one less or one more can uh, contribute to the property by coupling with the ground state. So that's why I'm also asking for the singlets, uh, singlets here. And actually the main contribution comes from an excited singlet state. Then in the rel block, I'm saying I want spin orbit and spin spin coupling and the zero field splitting tensor. And in the output, I would like to say uh, first the program does the QDPT calculation only including spin orbit coupling and gives you the property. And then it does the QDPT calculation again. Uh, and in that case includes both spin orbit and spin spin coupling and gives you the property again. And again, you can see that the number changed quite a bit. So in this case, both of these terms are important. So uh, now uh, the, what I would like to say is that the QDPT calculations uh, can be quite nice if uh, you, your system is, has uh, some kind of more complicated electronic structure or if uh, the spin orbit coupling is large because then uh, the QDPT will be way more reliable than the response theory calculation. And uh, also what is nice is that in the output you also get this printing of contributions from the states to your property. So this would be the contributions to the spin orbit contribution to zero field splitting. And you see that most of it is coming from this one uh, excited singlet root. Okay, and then uh, if you want to make your QDPT calculation uh, more accurate, you are probably also interested in, in including some dynamical correlation uh, uh, so to make it better than your CASA CF calculation. Uh, and probably the more straightforward way to do that uh, and also feasible way is using NFPT2. So in that case, uh, the program will then use the NFPT2 energies for the diagonal of the QDPT matrix. Uh, but it's also possible to uh, 
do QDPT with other ORCA modules. So here is an example input for multi-reference CI, uh, where you're, I'm starting from the same CASA CF calculation as I had before, and I'm using this CASA CF wave function as a reference for CISD. And again, I'm asking for spin orbit coupling, spin spin coupling. And uh, I will not show you the output per se, because I just want to highlight that uh, since ORCA 6, the output from all modules that are capable of doing QDPT calculations has been really unified. And uh, now if you ask for it, both the spin spin and the spin orbit coupling contributions should be consistently included there so that you can make uh, quite direct comparisons between results from different modules. All right, that was everything I wanted to show you today. I would like to thank particularly Dimitrios Manganas, who had a lot of do, uh, who had a lot to do with uh, programming these uh, QDPT calculations in a consistent way. I would also like to thank uh, Frank Neze, the whole Orca team, and uh, I would like to wish you lots of fun with uh, the new Orca version. Thank you.